Hello there, Capricorn. How are you? It's so good to see you again. I'm Mary Sue, and I'm so grateful that you're here. So today I'm doing a special reading. This is a three-month reading. We're going to take a look at the overall energies with the Oracle cards for the month for the months of April, May, and June. Um, so this is good from April 12th until June 21st. And the reason I picked those dates is because April 12th is actually the um, um, in Neptune and Jupiter conjunction in Pisces. That only happens once in a lifetime, literally once every 166 years. And it's a great opportunity for us to you know, be opened up to what our heart truly desires. What is our soul's purpose? Why are we here? And um, so that's why I'm doing this reading and it ends on June 21st, which is the summer solstice here in the Northern Hemisphere. So we will, we'll take a look at the um, overall energies with the Oracle cards and we'll move to the Tarot for me more details. And if you're enjoying the content that I create or resonating with the message, I'd really appreciate it if you would consider liking commenting or subscribing. I really do appreciate all of your support of my channel. I'm also, because this is such a once in a lifetime event, I'm offering a uh, free personal reading um, contest, I guess you might say, and the information about that, I'll give you um, more details about that at the end of this video. I also do do personal reading, so if you're interested, the link is in the description box. Okay, let's get into your reading Capricorn. Let's see what we have going on here. So your overall energy for this three month period is the whale spirit. Trust the great mystery. You know, the whale is about going deep with our emotions because water represents our emotions and the whales live in the ocean where there are great depths. Um, and this is about understanding your emotions and how it is all playing out in the bigger picture of your life. The energy is gaining a momentum. I love this because I feel as if you go deep with your emotions and start really trying to um, come in alignment with what it is that your heart wants you to do, it's as if, <laughs> you know, you gain momentum about moving forward. You know, one of the things about our emotions is, you know, we can have those roller coaster <laughs> days, months, years, you know, where we have the super highs and the super lows. Our emotions are there to help us open up to changes that we need to make. So, you know, um, to help us to better understand where it is that we're supposed to be going. So if you are feeling really positive about your life and very uplifted, it's because you are kind of in, you know, alignment with your soul's purpose. If you're feeling very sad about your life, then it's time to take a look at what changes you may need to make because look at what you have for your overall energy. You have the moon card and the queen of cups, very much of a Pisces type of energy, watery, um, very watery, you know, um, considering that you're an earth sign, this is very watery energy that you have here. The Queen of Cups is very intuitive, very self-nurturing, very taking good care of herself, understanding that if she does not fill up her own cup, she can't give love to others. That it is about first taking care of herself before she can care for others. Sometimes it is much easier for us to worry or take care of other people because then it distracts us from taking care of ourselves. Um, and there's always times in our life where this comes into play. You know, you may have very young children, like a newborn or something that's taking a lot of your time. Um, you could have older parents that you may be having to spend a lot of time with. And, you know, that can take a lot of your time. But it's really being focused on what you really need to do in order to take good care of yourself. And with the moon card, this is about going deep into your emotions, understanding um, some of the subconscious fears or emotions that you may not have had 
the opportunity or perhaps the inspiration or motivation to do, I feel like that is going to be coming into play over these next three months. So let's take a look at April. What do we have here? Moth, spirit, surrender now. Yeah, this is about surrendering to that journey, about allowing yourself to go deep. You know, sometimes this is a really difficult energy because it is, it can bring up a lot of fears. Um, but it is about finding those supportive people around you that can help you to look deep into your emotions and then to surrender to the journey. You know, it is interesting that it says, trust the great mystery. You know, the great mystery is, um, you know, our soul's path. We do not know where our path is going to lead us, but this is trusting in the divine, that the divine is going to bring those things onto your path that are for your better good. Uh, sometimes, you know, this is a kind of a, a little bit of an energy of really trusting in the divine. A lot of times we have a hard time trusting in the universe, trusting in the divine, because we want to control everything in our life. We feel like if we have control of, uh, of our life, then our life will go in the right direction. But this is about opening yourself up to understanding that great things can come your way when you do surrender. Sometimes when we're controlling, what we're doing is preventing those wonderful things to come into our path. You and your loved ones are safe. Yeah, I feel as if, you know, there is this sense of I don't want to surrender to the journey because then I give up control and then I won't have control over my life, my safety, my security, or the safety of and security of my loved ones. It's um, opening up to the fact that, that, you know, you could be focusing a lot on the 3D, a lot on your possessions, how much money you have in the bank, how much money you're earning, um, putting a lot of your worth into what you own or how much you are making. And this is really about opening up to the fact that there are riches that want to come in for you. It's almost as if you are blocking it because look, you have the wheel of fortune. This is for April. Like you have riches that want to come in for you. Um, I really get a sense that you're blocking them because you, it's almost as if you don't, you don't trust in the divine. You don't trust the universe. And a lot of times that happens, you know, when we have difficult things that have happened to us, difficult experiences, um, because then we start wondering, you know, has the universe forgotten me? Um, you may even be not trusting yourself. You know, that happens a lot when you've made decisions and then all of a sudden you realize, um, oh, that maybe wasn't the best decision for you, right? And then you're kind of like not even able to trust yourself. You don't want to make any decisions, any changes, because if you make any changes, you might make the wrong decision. You might change in the wrong way. So a lot of times what we do when we get in that energy is we just stay in status quo. But we're not here to stay in status quo. We're here to experience different things. We're here to experience love and to experience adventure and to experience loving ourselves, even facing our fears, you know, allowing ourselves to take a look at those fears, be thankful for those fears because fear can sometimes keep us safe but it can also keep us too safe. And if it keeps us too safe, then we don't get to experience, you know, a lot of the joy and abundance that we could be provided if we would just surrender to the path. You know, it's interesting because I feel like, you know, you can't sometimes get to a certain point on your journey and then you can look back, you know, um, decades, <laughs> you know, back to your childhood and see how certain events played out in your life. Even things that at the time you may have felt were decisions that you, sh you know, that you regret or something like that, or you regretted shortly thereafter. But every, there are no wrong decisions. It's something that you need to keep in mind. There are no wrong decisions because every decision helps to bring in a new experience for you. And everything that you are to experience will come to you. 
um, in some fashion at some point in your life. So it's this energy of just um, almost uh, like taking a sigh <laughs> and saying, okay, I just surrender. Just, it's kind of like, bring it on. Because when you say, bring it on, I release control and I trust the universe. And you say, okay, bring it on. Bring on all the blessings. I'm ready, right? <laughs> um, it's as if, you know, they will be showered upon you. It's this energy of you blocking it because I feel there's, there's an energy of having difficulty trusting you know, a feeling like life has to be hard or it's not going to pay out. Um, so let's see, let's go ahead and clarify this. Seven of Pentacles, the Fool, the Chariot. Yeah, King of Swords. You know, there's this energy of being stubborn, of, you know, it's my way or no way, you know. Um, and if you are resonating with that or, you know, for some of you, you may have already gone through this period. If you're resonating with that energy at all um, or can think of a time in your life where you were kind of stubborn, right? Not allowing yourself to step into a new chapter. Um, ask yourself, why, why did I wait so long? right? Why did I wait so long to leave that job, to leave that relationship, to leave that situation? Why did I wait so long? And most likely it's because you were fearful of what the changes would bring. Because sometimes when we're in a situation, even if we know intuitively that it's not the best situation for us, what happens is we feel safe in it because we know it. Um, taking a step out of that comfort zone and into a new chapter, right? It takes a lot of courage. We have to go deep. We have to face our fears of what is going to happen. It's about taking a look at that and saying to yourself, okay, I'm going to embrace the new instead of fear the new. Um, because we have this seven of pentacles here. I feel like you have spent a lot of time in a certain relationship, career, job, you know, situation, whatever it is. Sometimes when we've put a lot of time and energy into it, it makes it almost harder to move away from it. But the advice that you have here is to go in a new path, to choose again, because whenever we make a decision, and it doesn't turn out the way that we want it to. We always get to choose again. Um, it sometimes helps me when I'm trying to make a big change in my life to remember that you can choose again. No choice is permanent. You can always choose again. Um, and so I feel like when you step onto this path of being almost naive, let's do Let's face it, the fool doesn't carry a lot of baggage, right? He has, um, you know, this little backpack or a knapsack. He has his little dog. Um, but, but it's this energy of, okay, I'm embracing the new. I'm not taking a lot with me. It's almost naivety. It's about jumping off the cliff, starting the new path with total trust in the universe, that the universe is going to catch you that you are going to be safe, that you are going to be secure. Because I feel like that is the reason you're not moving forward. The Queen of Cups is very intuitive. You know, um, I, if you're feeling any inkling, like you're not happy with where your life is right now, right? It is indication, okay? You have to keep that in mind. It is an indication that there are changes that you need to make. And if you continue to have those inklings that you need to make a change and you don't, that's what brings on a tower moment. So once you choose a new path, Capricorn, look at this. You move forward very quickly. You move out of the sta status quo. You move into something that is much more victorious because the cherry is not just moving forward. It's moving forward in a much more victorious energy. So I love this. Um, your April is really about surrendering, you know? Um, you know, there, there's, uh, I remember this one time, I was really kind of like stuck. I, I was holding on. 
And it was because of fear. Uh, you know, that's the reason we hold on to what we have, right? And I was clenching. I was like, no, no, I don't want to go on to this new path. And then I finally said, okay, I'll give it a month, you know, uh, or give it a week, you know, okay, I'm going to spend the next week intuitively doing what I am, you know, my heart is calling me to do. I'm going to intuitively do it. I'm going to put down the rules because I feel like you you have these rules that, you know, because Capricorn, you can, you're a rule follower, right? You're a hard worker. Those are all good traits. But if you get stuck in the rules, if you get stuck in the hard work and think that life has to be hard, there's no way you can flow, right? Because you're kind of being a little bit, okay, I, this is the way it is and this is the way it's going to stay. You have to put that down a little bit and come into this more nurturing energy. The Queen of Pentacles is very nurturing. You know, she has a nice home. She provides for herself. She provides for her family. She nurtures. And there is a sense, there's a call here for you to nurture yourself um, and to believe that all will be you know, uh, <laughs> will work out for your greatest good. So let's see what May brings on. We have the rhino spirit, overcome any obstacle. You know, it's when you trust, when you surrender to your path, that it is amazing how things will come into alignment for you. Um, you know, and, it, and it's kind of like, I don't even get it. Like, I don't even get it. But you have to totally trust. You have to surrender to the journey. A time to give rather than take. So there's this energy of the four of pentacles. Holding on. There's that holding on out of fear. I'm going to hold on to every single pen penny I earn, right? I'm not going to be generous because I don't know when I may need that pentacle. So I'm going to hold on. And you see how, you know, there's this fence there. Nobody's crossing. Nobody's getting in. Nobody's getting my pentacles, you know. Um, nobody's getting close to my heart. There's this energy that you have to almost like open the gate. You see how there's all those locks on that key. You know, there's like this chain along here and then there's all those little locks. It's kind of it's kind of this energy of you are blocking your own success, abundance, joy by st keeping everybody out by um just trying to stay stay safe. By staying safe, you're actually um When you, you stay super safe, when you put up all these boundaries and everything, it, what you don't realize is that you may feel like you're safe, but you're really not because you're not on your true path. You're blocking all of this that wants to come in. You know, the Wheel of Fortune is all the blessings, all of the joy, the abundance, you know, the relationships that are more in alignment with who you are, the job that is more in alignment with who you are. It, it's almost as if you are blocking all of that because it's kind of like you don't, I feel like there's a little bit of your concern that you can't overcome the obstacles there's a little bit of fear of, I have to keep it safe. I don't want any obstacles. So Capricorn, um, you know, one question would be, have you had a lot of obstacles in the past? You know, that puts you into this energy of, um, I have to hold on to everything that I have. There's a sense of not trusting here, you know, um, and it says a time to give rather than take, you know, there's almost this energy of you're hoarding, you know, you're, you're hoarding your money, you're hoarding your energy, you're hoarding your love, you're hoarding your friendship, you're hoard, hoarding your own joy, right? And it's kind of like, you don't want to share any of that with the world. Well, one of the things is, is that we receive what we give. So when we are generous with ourselves, and I'm not saying that you have to go give all your money away, <laughs> um, but when we're generous with ourselves, with our time, with our energy, with our love, 
but putting it out there and not truly expecting anything back. Just putting it out there. Um, giving freely, then guess what? We receive freely. But here's the thing. The Queen of Cups knows that she has to give and also receive. You can't receive if you're all blocked off like this. You can't receive abundance. You can't receive joy. You can't receive happiness or love. You can't receive because it has to get through this wall that you are putting up. There is a sense of stepping into an energy of giving and receiving equally. Um, Three of Cups, you know, celebrating. The Three of Cups is also under here. You know, uh, Three of Cups celebrating a long-term financial su success. You know, almost like family wealth. So let's see what else we have here. Six of Wands again and the Empress. Page of Swords. Lovely energy. When you step into your truth and you surrender to the journey, there's this sense that you are going to be celebrating. Victorious. Now you have that in April too with the chariot. There's this sense that victory is yours. You can be the phoenix rising from the ashes. That is the empress, right? Rebirthing yourself when you allow yourself to be more open, to um, and not shut yourself off. Almost, I, I'm getting a sense of the hermit energy. You know, just shutting yourself off. Um, not wanting to, you may actually be generous with other people, but not generous with yourself because the Queen of Cups keeps coming back. You know, this energy of you have to fill up your own cup before you can, you know, be have enough to give to others. So it's a really interesting energy. You know, um, I have to say, I, I kind of had an epiphany about this a few years ago. I was really good about buying other people presents, <laughs> but I never bought myself anything. And um, recently I have really stepped into this energy of, you know, really, um, if there's something that I really want and it is affordable, right? Um, there's this energy of buying it and buying it with joy. Whereas before I would buy it and then feel guilt or shame about buying something for myself because I felt like, oh, I have to give, give, give to others, right? And so I feel like that's part of it. It's about understanding that every, you know, every time that you do something really nice for yourself that you may do for somebody else. And this really comes in with mothers. And since we have the Empress here, this is mother energy. Um, mothers, you know, are really good about fixing healthy meals for their family, you know, for their children, making sure that their family is eating well. But a lot of times they don't eat as healthy as the food that they give to their family. You know, um, there, it's about, you know, reading to your children, you know, you may read to your young children, but then you never take time to read something that brings joy to your heart. It's about taking a look at some of the things that you would do for a child. So whether you're, you know, you're male or female or whether you even have children or not, it's almost about like taking care of yourself like you would a young child, feeding yourself properly, putting yourself to bed, giving yourself a bath or a shower, um, and making sure that you have clean clothes on and, you know, your clothes are well, you know, taken care of, um, new shoes when you need them. When I got into that energy, I suddenly realized that, you know, it is true. As a mom, I had taken much better care of my children than I really had for myself. You know, I would make sure my children got exercise every day, but I didn't necessarily make sure I got exercise. I made sure my children had a set bedtime, but I didn't really do that with myself, right? So it is a little bit about taking care of that inner child. I mean, when we talk about the inner child, it really is about taking care of the inner child of ourselves. So let's take a look at June and see what you have here. Starfish spirit, open to infinite possibility. 
when you allow these boundaries to kind of start to open and that won't come overnight Capricorn you have to do it a little bit at a time because you know this is going to be something big for some of you don't let pride get in your way yeah so it's like you open yourself up to the possibilities but you also have to allow yourself grace and understand that you know if you want to go and choose again in a certain situation you don't have to stay in that king of <laughs> swords energy and say no this is my decision i have to stay with it right it's this energy of you know what um yeah i made that choice didn't turn out the way i wanted it to so i'm choosing again right um and allowing yourself that grace to do that sometimes it is really hard to admit to ourselves or admit to our friends or our family hey i want to choose again it didn't turn out the way i wanted it to so i'm going to choose again um and there's nothing wrong with that here's the queen of swords i love this queen of swords in this deck the queen of swords is a little bit like the king of swords okay cuts out things that no longer serve them um is willing to make changes based on looking at where it is that they want to go they're not looking the queen of swords has the telescope she's looking at the future she's not looking at the past she's like okay the past is in the rear view mirror and i'm not looking in the rear view mirror i'm only looking forward but the queen of swords also has a nurturing side to herself to her she's compassionate when she has to leave a job because she doesn't like the job it's not working out for her it's not what she thought it would be right um and she does it with grace she doesn't go in and you know cause a big scene or anything she does it with grace um if she has to allow people in her life to leave her life she does it with compassion and grace it's about making choices about what needs to be in your life and what no longer is serving you um and then allowing those things to leave your life with in a graceful way you know which is really you know sometimes when we say oh cut out you know what no longer <laughs> suits you um then what happens is you know then we get into this energy of you know telling people off it's not about telling people off it's about wishing them well and wishing yourself well as you move on in a new direction hanged man this has been coming for some time you are attached to something that you have lost so Capricorn take a moment to think about that or what are you uh, attached to something that you have lost in the past um this could be a relationship this could be you know um a job this could be a choice that you made that didn't turn out the way that you wanted it to it's um you're you're looking at what you have lost instead of what you could gain by making a change when you uh, disattach yourself <laughs> um detach yourself from this energy guess what you have the wheel of fortune now i want to say capricorn you have the wheel of fortune at the beginning in april and also at the end in june it's like one of your first cards on one of your last cards this means that this is in your energy it's in your aura it wants to come in for you the universe is just saying to you you know you have to allow us <laughs> to bring in this joy and abundance you have to allow us you have to unlock all the chains and kind of put down your pentacle and step away from the fence and kind of loosen your grip it's a little bit about loosening your grip and trusting a little bit more in the universe so let's see what we have here for your soul truth card and one of my favorite cards in the deck what if it isn't true the thing you are telling yourself right now the concrete reason why you think you don't belong you can't do it you won't get there you're not enough or it's not for you what if it wasn't true now capricorn we have that king of swords energy at the very beginning of the reading this is the king of swords energy you know oh no I know that this is true right and I'm standing by that but the 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 soul truth card is asking you well what if it wasn't true what if you are enough you know what if you do belong what if you can do it 
What if you will get there? You know, opening yourself up to that allows you to drop this energy and to step into the wheel of fortune. It's almost you have to shift your mindset about from I can't do it into to I can do it. It will happen for me. It's time for a soul chat. Close your eyes, put your hands on your heart and ask the wise one within you. What if it isn't true? What else might be possible? What lie do I need to let go of to reach my soul's truth? And that's what it's all about. It's about dropping that lie that you're telling yourself. And, you know, uh, I'm going to come back to that inner child. It's about, you know, you may feel as if you or your inner child, you know, can't do it, right? It, it's possibly something from childhood that somebody somewhere along the way convinced you that you couldn't do it or you didn't belong or you weren't good enough or, you know, that um, it's just a thing, life isn't for you. And it's about letting that go to the wayside, letting go of your grip of that so that you can step into this lovely new energy. Courage, my fear of rejection does not stop me from bravely going forward. Yeah. It's about putting down the fears and stepping into your sense of courage of saying, you know, I have the courage to give it a try. Just give it a try. Give it a try for one day. Give it a try for a week. See what happens when you shift your energy from I can't to I can. So let's see what we have here. Action. Drop all fear and just do it. You have the power to create and be whatever you truly want. Look inside your heart and take positive action in those things that bring you closer to achieving your desired goals. Nothing can stop you except your own fears. This card is positive confirmation from God and the angels that the time is right for you to start a new an exciting venture and you know you have the full <laughs> you have the full card at the very beginning it is about dropping the fears and stepping onto this path maybe with a little naivety just saying okay i'm i'm just gonna go for it right um have you ever gone off like a high dive oh i i had a friend i think i was like in the sixth grade and her pool had one of those super high dives you know and I got up there and there, the only way down was to go off the end. They wouldn't let you go back down the ladder, right? <laughs> and I remember just standing up there paralyzed, you know, and everybody was like, just jump, just jump, you know, it'll be over with, just jump. And once I jumped, oh my gosh, I, I really embraced it. It was fun, right? But it's kind of like that. I feel like you're on the edge of the diving board, right? And you're kind of like, I don't want to jump. I don't want to jump. You want the safe route back down. You want to go down the ladder. But this is your angels, you know, the divine calling you in and saying, it's okay. We're going to, you know, we'll be the big pool of water at the bottom, right? We'll, uh, we'll help you on the way down. All you have to do is trust and believe and all will be good. Um, so I am going to leave it there. Capricorn, um, I do wish you much love and light. If you are interested in the free personal reading uh, contest, to enter, all you have to do is a comment to this video. And in your comment anywhere, all you have to do is put love and light. And that enters you into the contest. I'll announce the winner on Saturday, April 16th. So um, good luck to everyone. I do do personal readings. The link is in the description box below if you are interested. And I do wish you so much love and light in this situation. Capricorn, please be gentle with yourself and compassionate. Um, allow yourself the grace that you so easily give to other people. Uh, allow yourself that same grace as you move through this energy. And I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Bye for now.